Hi everyone, I'm Ebenezer with uh, FuelTech Advanced Sensor Technology and I'm here today from our engineering lab and today I have the pleasure to have this conversation with Richard Walker. He's the technical director of our company and uh, he's the head of our mechanical engineering department and today we are doing a product review of our next generation LSM 305 which is an evolution of the uh, previous model LSM 300 which is a uh, some people call parallelogram load cell or side mount load cell. So Richard, I have a couple of questions for you regarding this product, sure. you know. Uh, and uh, the LSM 300 was one of the most accurate uh, for sensors with, with exceptional non-linearity and non-repeatability, you know. So what can you tell me about accuracy or precision of these uh, LSM 305 product. Sure. So a little bit about uh, the LSM 305, like uh, Ebenezer mentioned, it's it's come off of the LSM 300 that we've had for numerous years, and probably the first thing you're going to notice is these little uh, dog bone shapes inside mm -hmm. of the particular part. So we actually put the strain elements on all four sides, and then just the the shape and design, we've been able to really hone in on optimizing the stress locations. So optimizing the stress locations, also material selections is really important. It's aerospace grade aluminum. So from these little details, we're able to achieve 0.02% uh, per um, completely, um, except for the 200 pounds, um, that is a stainless steel part, and that is at 0.06%. So it is, the 0.02% is the most accurate load cell that Futech currently produces. And that 0.02% is maximum air that we will see. So. Um, every part that we put through, we actually test and calibrate, and we're significantly better than actually the All right, so, uh, so when you are creating our spec sheets, we're going to be conservative. So that's why in our spec sheet we see you see 0.02 percent, but it can get even better than 0.02 percent uh, non-repeatability and non-linearity, right? Absolutely. So we test a, a lot of these different products through the calibration process during our prototype or first pilot runs. And we are conservative on the spec. So we look at um, the performance, the spread of the data. We look at um, CP, CPK um, details of the nonlinearity. And then from there, we're able to develop a spec that we're highly confident that we will always meet. OK. In some, some real life applications, uh, there might be some external factor that's out of control of the engineer who is uh, working on this uh, forestry measurement application. And it might, for example, overload the sensor. Yeah. So what type of design features LSM 305 brings that can protect or help uh, minimize those type of issues? That's a really good question. Um, so we do have, and especially during installation and sometimes usage, um, we have customers that will go and overload okay. the sensors. Um, so usually most sensors are 150%. Um, of capacity to capability. This one, we actually integrated this wire cut, this little EDM wire cut okay. that's directly integrated into the part. So we're able to precisely control the gaps on here. Mm -hmm. And because the way that we hold it from the side, it's like a side mount parallelogram, we hold it and then load it through the center. This actually will deflect um, and then we're able to have a mechanical stop directly okay. built in. Okay. So for example, in this product, 2.2 pounds to 100 pounds, we have 250 pounds safe overload. So that means if you were to hang 250 pounds, it would still be okay. And it would still perform within all of its specifications. And on the 200 pound, um, because of the, the mounting screws and whatnot, we rated up to 400 pounds. So as you see, we're definitely given a lot of, of capabilities as far as the safe overload. Um, and being able to allow customers, in case that aha moment occurs, that we don't end up damaging the product during their installation. So let me see if I, guess, if I got it correctly. For the low capacity LSM 305, it can go up to 1,000% overload protection, 10 times? Yes, so on the 2.2, the so we just rated up to 250 pounds, okay. whether you get a 2.2 pound, 5 pound, 10 pound, 25, 50, okay. or 100 pound, okay. um, it's rated to 250 okay. pounds. Understood. Okay. Now, uh, I, I'm noticing here that I have an extra chip element in the, uh, in the flexure uh, circuit, you know, uh, in this, in this uh, sensor. So, uh, and I think it's a TADS chip. It, TADS stands for, for our audience that's not familiar with the terminology, it's a transducer electronic data sheet. Correct. Why a TADS chip is it's important for force measurement solutions? Um, so what we've done with this product, this is really, like we mentioned, is the next generation electronics. Mm -hmm. um, or sensor with the integrated electronics is we wanted to incorporate the TEDs, like you said. It's, it's basically the electronic data sheet. Okay. So it complies to 
um, the 1451.4 standard mm -hmm. as far as all the requirements that go into it and, and how the, the TEDS chip is programmed. So what we're able to do, especially being an OEM unit, is we're able to provide the calibration data, the serial number, basically the who am I and what, what are my characterizations of me. And then being able to allow the customer as they integrate this into their system with their electronics, they just plug it in and we'll basically okay. give them all that data. Um, so it eliminates a lot of human errors, um, them going in and inputting that data um, manually. Uh, typos is, is something that we wanted to eliminate for the customer. So that's one of the reasons we've incorporated the TEDS feature directly okay. into this part. That's We know that many, we serve several industries with a variety of different applications, right? So in some of those applications, the user or the engineer cannot control the ambient temperature, the external temperature surrounding the sensor. So what, what type of design chains or design features we can embed to this type of solutions to uh, minimize those temperature variations. Yeah, so one thing that we've incorporated on here is, uh, is a PT1000 mm -hmm. um, little resistor. So what that is, is it's a, a platinum-based RTD. Um, okay. At 1,000 ohms, it uh, gives you that resistance at zero degrees C. So we've incorporated it directly into the part to allow customers to be able to, one, get temperature measurements right inside of of their device, so if self-heating is a concern. The second part is then it now it starts allowing the customer to perform what I call active compensation okay. for temp shift zero. Um, so they know the temperature, um, we can give the characterization of what that sensor is, and then they can act actively um, reduce their errors if they see a significant temperature delta in their testing. Okay. Um, a good example is say, you're in a window seal in the morning, it's cooler, in the afternoon, it gets a lot hotter. That means your part's going to be heating up. That means, guess what? The zero naturally would be changing over that time, which um, can be critical in the application. So by having the, the temperature on board for the measurement of, of that, and then also being able to, to characterize the products, then they can really um, eliminate that air that's, that's introduced because of temperature. Understood, understood. I also am noticing here that this this product has a has a different configuration in terms of cable and connector. It has a JST8 uh, connector, and which is uh, it's a different design compared to a LSM300. Why you made that decision to change the the, the cable design? Yeah, so one of the things that uh, we were looking at is again being an, an OEM based sensor that we want to integrate into. Um, the customer's product is we're looking at the, the cable attachment and it can get somewhat complicated um, with the, the soldering of, of the direct cable into the part or they would have to go to a crimping. Um, you know, crimping has its own IPC 620 requirements, can be complicated for certain companies to be able to implement. So that's where we came up with the, the JST. It's an eight position connector. So four of them are for the, the sensor main bridge, two okay. of them are for the TEDs, two of them are for the PT1000. And then we wanted to go with a connector that was fairly robust, um, simplistic in nature to be able to allow um, you know, multiple um, connections on the end. This is a, a crimp displacement connector okay. um, for the mating. So you can get all different sizes of these um, and be able to easily implement it directly from the sensor. So it's just a simple plug in, it's keyed, has a locking mechanism, and then the customer can directly connect it into their electronics. So again, trying to simplify the total cost for the customer, at the same time trying to improve the product, make it more robust. Um, we also added another feature on the front end, um, which is we have four solder connections on the front. So okay. if that connector, for whatever reason, doesn't work for the application, it allows who's ever using it to solder those four connections, which just gives you the bridge only um, for the measurement. It doesn't give you the PT-1000 or it doesn't give you the TEDS capability. Excellent. Um, you know, just, just adding that in there in case, you know, again, someone cannot use the, the connectorized version. Yeah. But our goal is to allow that connector, again, to simplify the manufacturing process. So we don't only look at um, our, our total um, cost, we look at the total supply chain cost, which is including the customer integrating it, implementing it, mm -hmm. you know, the, the resources and time for them to be able to, to make that connection to their system. Now we discussed about several 
in, uh, very important features like high accuracy, uh, the overload stop, the embedded mechanical uh, overload stop, the integrated TEDs and onboard uh, temperature compensation, the con D uh, DST8 connector. Now I think one of the most one of the questions we got from our OEM customers, right, that was a product was uh, was meant was designed for mostly for OEM applications. It's a uh, power consumption, sure. right? Because in OEM applications we have the sensor, we have the the motor, the gearbox, and, and many other electromechanical components, which is part of the main system, right? Sure. So, what can, what can you tell me about the power consumption of this model? Yeah, so um, on this sensor, we use a bridge resistant, which is a, a thousand ohms, which allows us to have a little bit lower power consumption. Um, you know, this started with the, the LSM 300, has continued into the 305. There's okay. numerous times that they implement these in, in uh, devices that are handheld based, that are battery powered. So to be able to help improve um, or reduce the power consumption, improve the battery life, that's why we maintained it at 1,000 ohms. Talk to me specifically about OEM applications. Why OEM uh, uh, application needs a low power consumption sensor? Again, um, so there's certain parameters. If it's a handheld or battery-based device, it's, it's a extremely important that they get the maximum battery life out of their total system. Okay. Um, there is a, you know, a decent amount of, of draw that can be occurring from the sensor. Um, being the thousand ohms, depending on what their excitation levels is, can really drive that. The other part is being the thousand ohm, um, is that if they're implementing this in a critical area, um, we wanna make sure that this isn't generating substantial heat that would then impact their, their complete assembly. Perfect, understood, understood. No, I uh, think we have a we have a great coverage of this product. I think we covered the most important features of LSM three hundred five, our next generation sign mount of parallelogram OEM load cell. Appreciate your time. Thank you for uh, being here today, and thank you for thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, hit the like button and subscribe to a few tech channel. Thank you. Thank you.